Ladies and gentlemen, is Moore's Law on the verge of being, well, irrelevant? Well, maybe not quite irrelevant, but it's not as healthy as it used to be. Intel have confirmed that, well, we're going to be seeing Canon Lake delays. And so KB Lake is going to now be an intermediary platform. And so rather than the standard two-year TikTok um, schedule, which Intel have had for some time now, we're going to be seeing something along the lines of a 2.5 year type of situation so it's going to be at least two and a half years simply because 10 nm is being a rather large pain in the buttocks so kb lake was originally supposed to be a sky lake refresh and of course we're going to naturally see improvements such as slight speed bumps uh, as you'd expect we're naturally going to see improvements to the integrated GPUs because that's becoming a thing right now, although gamers don't necessarily give a damn about it because, let's face it, you're not really going to care about the integrated GPU when you're putting like a high-end GPU like an NVIDIA or an AMD card. But, despite the fact that Intel are telling us that, you know, it's, it's not a refresh, it's not a re refresh, it's looking like it really is just going to be a refresh. Um, and so, KB Lake, some people are referring it to it as a KBL, is going to most likely arrive September 2016. So, basically a year from now. Um, and so, 2017, very early, let's say first quarter, you'll be seeing the Enterprise Solutions. But the weird thing is, notebook lineups are going to appear possibly earlier. We might even be seeing them early 2016 which eh. Canon Lake well what about Canon Lake Canon Lake is gonna be delayed until 2017 at least um, in fact some people are saying that at the very early we're gonna be seeing is like first and second quarter and it might even slip all the way back to like the fourth quarter and once again poor yields is what is being cited quite simply put if you're manufacturing, let's just say for the sake of argument, a thousand processors and 500 of the blighters turn out to be useless pieces of silicon, in other words you don't have enough cores working, it doesn't run at the correct clock speed, or it basically turns into a little nuclear therm uh, thermal reactor and basically explodes because you know it can't handle the temperature, or say power, that's not any good. And obviously I'm slightly exaggerating, but you can see the point. The bottom line is, at the moment, they are still working on the process. They need to improve the yields so that they can get better value for money for themselves. Because obviously, it just doesn't make much business sense at the moment. So, the introduction of KB Lake is going to be there to basically seal the deal. It's going to be there to smooth things over. It's basically going to be a lube. Now... When one thinks about it, that puts us as consumers, if we're interested in high-end processors, in an actual really weird position. Because if KB is going to be, let's just for the sake of argument, say 10% faster than Skylake, it actually means that Skylake's a pretty decent bet to buy. Because there's not really going to be the buyers we get, say, three months later. I mean, let's even assume... You bought KB, uh, sorry, you bought Skylake three months later, the KB came out, and it was like 5-10% difference. You're not going to be that pissed. The only time you might be pissed is if they release KB and it's got, say, better uh, CPU configuration. So, for the sake of argument, it has, let's say, six cores with two threads per core. And that's a standard. That would be the standard of, let's say, the... Are what the standard i7 configuration, you know, the 4770K or 2600K, basically if that happened, but I don't think it will for some time to be totally honest. So really, it actually makes Skylake a pretty, I wouldn't say safe buy, because there's nothing safe in the computer industry as we all know. You could buy like a 980 Ti and two days later, NVIDIA could technically say, hey guys, we've managed to do this and now we're releasing the 980 Ti 1 billion, which has got twice the amount of CUDA cores. And obviously, you know, it's unlikely, but it could happen. You never know. The bottom line is it looks like if you're going to buy Skylake on release day, um, which obviously is going to be early next month, assuming nothing slips, which it doesn't look like it will, you're going to be pretty happy for about a year. Now, assuming that 
Zen is not delayed, which of course is from AMD, that that could potentially be a bit of a fight because Zen obviously is going to be going up against whatever Intel platform is out at the time, either KB or Skylake. So maybe then you might say, hey, you know what, Skylake has got a bit of competition, but for now, I'm going to say that it's foolhardy to buy any processor right now unless you absolutely need it or it doesn't really matter. Like let's just say for the sake of argument you're buying a low-end media center system or something along those lines or like a desktop for work and it doesn't, it's just going to run office, then sure, fine, go ahead, buy a system, that's not a problem. But if you're buying a high-end gaming rig and you're dropping down, let's say, a thousand, two thousand pounds, it doesn't really make sense to go ahead and buy Haswell or something along those lines because it's just not a good buy. And even if you were to buy something along the lines of Broadwell, like just for the sake of argument, a uh, five eight twenty k, I'm still not convinced that that's a good purchase either. So for now, the most disconcerting gamers probably wait. Wait until Skylake, um, then go ahead and buy the best system you can afford. Hopefully DDR4 will have come down a little bit. You can get DDR4 now for roughly £100 for 16 gigabytes. Personally, I would say that 16 gigabytes is overkill for most games at the moment. So you could possibly get a cheaper introduction to DDR4. Let's say, take of argument, 8 gigabytes, which will cost you about 50-ish pounds maybe 60 depending on the manufacturer and how lucky you can be so it won't be that expensive it won't be prohibitively expensive but obviously there is going to be a bit of a price premium and the problem is as we all know retailers add that bit of price gouging they they put the knife in and then they give that son of a bitch a twist unfortunately when a new platform is released it's one of the reasons that Amazon, in some ways, is actually really popular amongst their hardware enthusiasts because typically they'll stick to the RRP, not always, but typically they'll stick as closely to the RRP rather than adding that price premium. Hopefully Skylake, however, won't be released in limited quantities. And obviously, we should have a fairly good selection of motherboards. Whether you'll want to jump on Skylake the second it's released is kind of up to you. I did it with Haswell, um, uh, with the 4770K, and I didn't regret it. I've done it with a lot of AMD boards in the past, and I've done it with a lot of Intel boards, actually, and I've not really regretted it. Yes, I've had to do a BIOS update in the past, um, which I had to do when I bought an E4300. I had to do a BIOS update to put in it. Q6600, but it's minor. The only time I've actually had a problem with it, and I actually really regretted buying a launch board, was with my 2500K. And the only reason because of that was the dodgy SATA controller situation. Basically, one of the SATA controllers on the board, uh, this is a well-renowned problem, died. And so you could do refunds. You could get like you know the board refurbished, or they'll send you a replacement. Uh, I, I had an Asus board, but by all means, it, it affected multiple manufacturers. But I just decided, hey, you know what, I, I just cannot be bothered to take apart my system, have them send everything over, especially because I'd sold all my old parts at that point, so I thought, bollocks to it, I'll just wait, buy a SATA controller and go from there. Anyway, so yeah, pretty much at the moment, Intel have confirmed everything. So, we're going to be waiting a bit for 10NM, which is a bit of a shame, to say the least. It could also mean, as a bit of a, a sidetrack, that KB and Canon could technically be on the shelves at the same time and actually be competing somewhat with one another. But you know what? I'm actually comfortable with that. I'm, I'm okay with that. That, as long as there are some factors which differentiate themselves, uh, or help differentiate the two chips from one another, so maybe extra cores or major price differences or something. But I guess we'll just have to see. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.